Well, good morning there and welcome back. So you have started watching uh, videos on a uh, video lecture on um, mathematical foundation of robotics. And this unit actually, in the second unit, we are discussing more on humanoid robot and cobot modeling techniques. And in that context, we are now uh, trying to introduce you with a very basic problem uh, that is inverse pose or inverse kinematics modeling of humanoid robot or cobot. And in that context, uh, I am telling you again and again, and it is very important to know that unlike industrial robot, uh, for humanoid and cobot, um, getting close form kinematic solution, say in terms of eight and two function, it's not easy. In fact, it is difficult. Okay. Um, and sometimes it is uh, impossible because they do not follow Piper's recommendation. And if any robot is not following Piper's recommendation, then as you know, getting close form kinematic solution is not guaranteed. So today we have muscle power uh, in the terms of computation, right? <laughs> Computational muscle power. And we have uh, very good uh, numerical techniques. And can we ex uh, explore how to utilize those already established numerical uh, methods to solve our uh, problem, inverse pose problem, okay? So that we are discussing and in that context, um, I have, uh, in the, my last class, I have talked about uh, newton raphson uh, algorithm, okay? And this is geometrically, this is how geometrically we have um, deduced the algorithm in this form, okay? And also, uh, in my last lecture, um, using Taylor series of expansion, uh, we have also deduced the same algorithm, right? So, uh, theta is a variable, and then uh, we are looking for, for what theta value, f theta will be zero, that means theta will be a root of this uh, function uh, using this algorithm, okay? The deduction is very simple. So, the algorithm will run like this, uh, in a particular iteration, ith iteration, okay, that theta n plus 1 will be updated with earlier theta n minus, uh, uh, theta n minus uh, functional value at that point, theta n, and the derivative, first derivative of that function at that uh, point, okay. So, this is the algorithm. But, uh, Although it is very simple algorithm, it has several advantages, but some limitations also. It is very uh, pertinent to know its uh, advantages first. Uh, first advantage is that it is uh, it has a quadratic convergence. In fact, it can be proved, but we are not going into proof. Quadratic convergence means, suppose in ith iteration, if the difference between and theta n say equals to 0 0.1 then in i plus i mean next iteration iteration uh, this theta n plus 1 minus theta n uh, will converge with the square. That means the difference will be, so difference will point 0.1, difference will be 0 0.01, and in the next iteration, it will be 0 0.01 square. So this is this is the meaning of quadratic convergence. That means equal to, you see, 0 0.0001. So this is very fast, isn't it? Eh? So that's, oh, that's the reason we love in numerical algorithm, uh, quadratic convergence, we love it, okay? So, this algorithm has quadratic convergence properties, okay? And uh, it is good. And only one initial guess is required, although the guess has to be uh, made judiciously, otherwise getting a solution will be difficult, okay? Then um, formulation of this method is easy, both Taylor series and expansion and then uh, using Taylor series and using uh, geometry, we have shown how easy it is to um, deduce this algorithm. Hmm. 
and also it is not difficult to extend it to multiple dimension that we are going to see today okay and the derivation is intuitive okay and that means you can predict this behavior by observing the health of the algorithm how it is converging whether it is converging or it is diverging right and if it diverges then we will have to take action right so all this thing is very transparent here so these are the advantages however some limitations are also there you see if you make large error in initial estimation then the algorithm may not converge okay so that means the um, case uh, the solution should be in the neighborhood of the initial case okay and also if you have uh, if you are going to find the roots which has multiplicity then the convergence rate will no more be uh, quadratic and then it is bad right or it will take a lot of time and i i believe if you do not know what is multiplicity just take an example say i have a function theta f of theta which is a function of uh, one variable theta theta cube plus 2 theta square minus 7 theta plus 4 by factorization you can see it will be theta plus 4 inside bracket times theta minus 1 squared inside bracket okay so you see out of three roots it has one root theta equal to minus 4 for that is this a function nature of the function okay you see this will be minus 4 fine okay and here this is theta equals to 1 so these two overlapping roots are there okay so that's why it is called that the root has uh, multiplicity okay um with even multiplicity 2 okay even multiplicity 2 so two roots are actually overlapping so that kind of finding that kind of root is um difficult actually okay uh, um, using this algorithm uh, convergence will be uh, very slow so um what to do in such situation we need to modify the algorithm huh? so we can actually uh, the modification is just like this okay okay so we have introduced a factor huh? so in machine learning you know this is learning rate kind of thing but it is a different here so this is a factor which will actually control the uh, this uh, term f theta n divided by um, derivative of f theta n and uh, where is this eta is the multiplicity of the root it could be 1 2 or 3 depending on what multiplicity it has uh, like here it has it has two multiplicity 2 so this could be 2 but what if you do not know exactly that what is the multiplicity of the root might have then what to do you will have to make some empirical guess and seeing some uh, um, iteration you'll have to make out you can try 1 2 3 with this uh, factor and see what is happening to the algorithm convergence of the algorithm right that's actually not very good no uh, empirical thing sums rule no so what is the other alternative other alternative is try to figure out a different variant of newton raphson method where uh, the gradient is not there at all because here the problem was figuring out the gradient right here is uh, equals to zero and if it is approaching uh, to zero because x axis is the tangent here and then um, this becomes very very difficult to compute okay if it, even if it is approaching towards zero so what if we can formulate another algorithm which does not require finding um, 
derivative at all. Okay. So you see, uh, this is um, uh, okay. So this is uh, uh, one gradient uh, where, of course, gradient is required. So what you see that um, I am making uh, my um, representation of the derivative with theta and using the same principle of figuring out uh, modifying the algorithm okay so same you see here gradient you are calculating and you see so earlier it was f of theta now it is a prime theta that means derivative of the theta function uh, derivative first or derivative of the function um, versus theta is my function okay so if if i just take it a function as l theta then this is on l theta you can apply um, Newton Rasson method and eventually you will come with this algorithm, right? You see, very, very simple. So again, tan psi equals to this divided by regular theta. So double derivative at that function equals to, okay? Uh, you see, um, this is actually equals to what? Tan psi is the derivative of this function and this function itself is a false derivative. So derivative of that function is a double derivative, right? So is equals to this, and then delta theta, the increment is becoming is like this. And then you are making, okay? So initial guess, minus initial theta value minus the next iteration theta value equal to this. So theta one equals to theta zero minus this, okay? And then eventually you are writing in a general form the algorithm. Okay, so this is the modification of uh, Newton Raphson algorithm called Newton's algorithm, and it retains its quadratic convergence. Hmm. And this actually for um, a function of several variable, if theta is f of theta is a function of several variable, then this is called a Hessian matrix. Okay, and it's a square matrix formed with the second partial derivative of a scalar valued function or scalar field. It describes the local curvature of a function of several variables. This is very, very uh, simple. Okay, So this is equals to dot delta theta 2. So if you have n number of variables, then so uh, d to f, d theta 1, not d theta n. And this has to be reported. Now you will have to differ partially differentiate this function with respect to theta 2. And this will be like this. Well, you have got the rhythm, so you see. Right? So this will continue up to okay, del to f, del theta n into del theta one, del to f, del theta n, del theta two, dot dot del theta, del to f, del theta n. Del theta n. Eh? So you see, this is eventually becomes the second derivative eventually becomes a matrix n cross n. And the, if all these derivatives exist, that means the um, first derivative the function is continuous, then this is a symmetric matrix. This matrix is called Hessian matrix. Okay, this is called Hessian matrix, and uh, it has a property, you see, uh, it is square matrix, uh, it is symmetric matrix in the sense that uh, because uh, if I differentiate this and this is same as if I, right, so if I change the order here to here and here to here, 
this differentiation does not change. So with the diagonal, you will see it's a symmetric matrix. Okay. And we can write uh, normally if the function is f. Okay, so Hessian of this equals to this. This is a square matrix. Hmm? Um, <clears throat> so uh, we have multiple uh, multivariate function. Say first we consider a single valued multivariate function. That means the function is. Um, so I have just told this is a function nature. Uh, that is, uh, I have several inputs theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 out of theta n and output is 1. Then the gradient or partial derivative of the function is also called the uh, that is uh, this operator uh, uh, grad uh, gradient operator acting on function f is known as Jacobian of the function okay and denoted by j. So physically what does it mean? It means you have a function of several variables, okay, like this, okay, theta uh, vector, okay, in vector form I am writing theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, these are all variables. And if there is a change in all these variables, how it is going to differ, uh, small change, how it is going to uh, affect the small changes in the function itself is actually uh, determined by it's Jacobian or the first derivative of that function, right? So this will be the first derivative of the function that is uh, um, uh, gradient f theta 1, gradient f theta 2 is a vector of n cross 1 dimension, okay? And the second order partial differentiation of the same function would be the Hessian which I just wrote and in general form you can write down um, this Hessian is a very important matrix, Hessian matrix in this form, right? It's very, very easy. H F I J equals to delta F uh, del theta uh, I times del theta J. You see, all are like this. So here I equal to J, that's why this, and then hmm, this is how you go, uh, get N cross N matrix. <coughs> Okay, so if, as I told, if the second partial derivatives of the function exist or if the second uh, partials of the functions are uh, continuous, then uh, Hessian is a symmetric matrix. Okay. So that's it. That's very good. Actually, we are now bits and pieces collecting all the informations which are required for my uh, robotic application. And you will see how easy they are if you know this a uh, little bit. Um, linear algebra. Now we are extending it to multiple multivariate functions. That means I have now um, uh, the nature of my function is actually this. The f is function, uh, in the range that is it has input n and output n. How it could be uh, written you see I can write down say f1 is a function of mm, mm, f is a function of theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, theta n, f is a function of this. Then f2 is a function of all this, theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. The expression will be different. So, so the meaning of this is, you see, you have m such functions, okay? And each function has n variables. So that is actually input. So you are inputting this and you are getting output this, okay? So this is a vector valued function because you can write in this form of vector. Eh? And you are inputting this uh, vector and you are getting this as an output. Is clear that is this function is all about. Hmm? Now, if this is our actually in our robotics, this is the case, so that's why I am writing and I will just uh, write it down in the next couple of slides. You will see. So, then how to calculate Jacobian? 
I need to calculate Jacobian, right? That means I need to know if theta 1 is actually changing small changes, some, some values, theta 2 is changing, theta 3 is changing, then how it reflects the changes, uh, differential changes in the output that's actually captured by Jacobian hmm? matrix by definition, okay, uh, the fun uh, Jacobian of this function. You see, I have i equals to 1, 2, 3 up to n, that is the input, okay. Uh, and then output is actually uh, function j, okay. So, oh, these are my um, Jacobian. So, what will be the dimension of the Jacobian? n cross n, you see. The first derivative of function f1 with respect to theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 up to theta n. Then second function, again theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, theta n. Like that, eh? mth function. So, how many rows are there? How many rows? m rows. How many columns? n columns, as simple as this. So, this is the Jacobian. And then, the collection of second order partial derivative is, then how to, you will have to, for you see, for each function, you will be able to figure out a Hessian matrix, right? Which is square matrix n cross n. So, if you want, <coughs> like to <coughs> figure out the Hessian of multiple multivariate function like this, then, then you will have to make a Hessian matrix which will be a collection of Hessian matrix for each function and collecting them like this. So each function, you see, this will be n cross n. Again, this will be another n cross n. This will be another n cross n. So there will be m n cross n matrices, Hessian matrices. So, if they are written, and we need to write, and in this form normally they are written, and then this is called that um, the tensor, uh, third order tensor, right? So, second order, uh, so we have a order of that uh, m, m cross n, n, m cross n, then what will be the order n cross mn, okay? So, this is third order tensor, okay? If I just tell you this is um, n cross n, n cross n, right? So, n cross m, sorry, n cross n, and how many such uh, m, right? So, um, dimension would be, uh, if I just side by side you write, eh? so this is, um, eh? if it is 3 cross 3, <coughs> take an example, 3 cross 3, then another 3 cross 3, up to 3, this is also 3 cross 3, but M. Huh? So um, they are kept side by side, so 3, row 3 columns, column are increasing, right? So N cross Rho remains the same, n cross m, n. So, a third other tensor will be the value of, um, will be the representation of Hessian. So, so far so good, right? Is it clear? Very simple, right? And now, um, we have already discussed the concept of Hessian matrix, okay? Uh, now we will see another variant of um, uh, of uh, Newton Raphson method, which is known as um, non uh, derivative method, okay, and which is also very very easy. And I will start from here in the next class and discuss a little bit about this uh, variant, this variant of Newton Raphson method, because here. Uh, unlike here, you will have to double differentiate and differentiation has to exist, right? Although this is has a quadratic convergence, right? As I told you, okay? So, but you will have to compute the Hessian matrix and then you see uh, 
the algorithm the way it will work is actually n plus 1 theta n minus uh, you see the derivative of the function hmm, divided by double derivative of that function right and then this is hessian eh? and this is jacobian so this has to be uh, inverted right so it has to be inverted and if it is inverted then there is a problem that if uh, it is not of full rank if determinant might be zero then it will not exist uh, inversion will not exist so we again put a factor and when this will happen when the matrix will be in its singular configuration that means some of the rows or column are uh, dependent okay and then you cannot figure out this so putting this value equal to zero you can discard those uh, um, upgradation and you can continue your iteration with uh, incremental value so that you can come out from the uh, uh, singular configuration and then continue so this this is the way it uh, the algorithm uh, works and a little bit uh, we'll discuss uh, more okay uh, you see this is what i was discussing okay so you'll have to figure out if you modify a little bit theta n plus 1 like this First derivative means Jacobian of the function. Okay. Okay. So step by step we will have to. So this is a modified kind of Newton's method, uh, which um, uses Hessian matrix concept, and it has also quadratic components. But here the problem is I told you, and how to come out from the problem is this. But what? If all together we we want to come out from all this business of calculating derivative, double derivative, right? So there is another variant which we are going to discuss in my next class. Till then, stay safe and bye bye.